Welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be building an e-commerce website using Django. To get started, we can just clone this Django project boilerplate repository that we have on GitHub. So you can just copy this link and we're going to clone it here. And so with that, we can then change into that repository and I'm going to open it up in Visual Studio Code. And so we can then create ourselves a virtual environment. I'll then activate it. And we're just going to go here into the requirements and I'm going to change this to Django 2.2 that we're going to install. We can then type pip install dash r requirements.txt. And with that installed, we can then get started. Hey everyone, before we jump into this, if you're interested in becoming a better Django developer, then check out justdjango.com, enroll and you'll get access to exclusive video courses every month on Python, JavaScript and React with a specific focus on obviously Django. The link is in the description below. So now that everything is installed, we can make use of this management command that we have in our core app. And that's the rename command, which allows us to rename the project. So all we need to do is just call python manage.py rename and I'm going to call mine DJ e-commerce and now you can see it's been renamed to G DJ e-commerce and there it is and let's try and run the server and there we go. We can see we have two unapplied migrations and that's because of moving over to Django 2.2 so we can run python manage.py migrate and there we go. Now we can run the server again and cool. And we can go and open this up in the browser as well. And okay, we get this no such file, which is static in ENV. That's a directory that we just need to create for our static files. So we'll just create it there. And if we try it again, now we're just getting the generic 404, which is fine because we don't actually have any URLs. And so before we start coding, I'm just going to say that this tutorial is not for absolute beginners, if you haven't worked with Django before, then rather watch some of the other tutorials on this channel before you jump into this. And it is assumed that you have an understanding of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Django as well. So if you are not that comfortable with all of those concepts, then this is going to be difficult. And we're also assuming that you've seen some of the other tutorials on this channel where we've covered things like authentication, and so if you are not familiar with any of that, then again, rather watch some of the other tutorials before you look at this, because the pace will be quite fast then. And otherwise, if you're comfortable with all of that, then we can actually get started here. So let's go and search for Django all auth, because that's what we're going to use for authentication. So we'll just go to the read the docs and we just need to install the package. So let's come here. We'll stop the server and just type pip install Django all auth. Then we need to bring the authentication backends. So inside DJ e-commerce settings, we'll go all the way to the bottom and add authentication. Then we need to go and add all of these installed apps. So sites and all the all auth apps. And we can do that here inside installed apps we'll paste them there and then we can scroll down specify the site id as one and then we need this url pattern added into our urls so we'll come and add it there and i'm just going to change it to a path and remove that regular expression there we go and then it just says we need to migrate. So we'll say Python manage.py migrate. And cool, there are all of those migrations now. And we can go and run the server. And if we take a look here at accounts login, then we have a login page. We should be able to log in with an admin user. Cool, so I am. You can just create your own admin user to log in. And so we were successfully logged in. So that's the basic installation of Django all auth. We will look at styling this later on. 
And so the next thing is going to be creating our models. So we're going to do this inside core models. And this is going to be everything that defines the logic of storing an order and the process of adding an item to an order. And we've touched on this in the shopping cart video that we did, which I'll link in this video as well. So if you haven't seen that, we did introduce some of that logic here, but we'll go through it again. So the basic concept is that we have an order item and this comes from models.model and I'll just say pass for now. And then we have an order and this is so that we can link all of the order items to that order. And the order you could basically view as the shopping cart. So we store all of the items that the user has added to the cart inside this order. And every time they log in, we fetch the order that they have and display that order with kind of like a shopping cart item count in the top right corner, like you see in most e-commerce websites. And we'll also define some kind of Boolean field on the order to say whether it has been ordered or not. So if it's not ordered, then this will be the order that is being used until it is ordered. And as soon as it is ordered, then the next order will be created after that. Now, even though we have an order item, we will still need another class, which will be the item. And so the order item is just a way of linking between the order and the item itself. So the item will be displayed in a list of items that you can purchase. But as soon as you add it to the cart, then it becomes an order item. And this is kind of like an intermediate step, a link between these two models. And you can then handle very specific logic about the order item here inside this class. So let's just pass in some basic fields. For now, we'll add a character field to the item. We'll just say maximum length is 100. And then we'll define the string method and just say return self.title. And I'm just going to copy that and paste it for both of these as well. Then we're going to need to make use of our auth user model. So that comes from Django settings. So we'll say from Django.conf import settings. And then we're going to associate the order with a user. So user equals models dot foreign key with settings dot auth user model. And we'll say on delete equals to models dot cascade. We'll add an ordered field, which we can say is models dot boolean field default equals false. And here I'll say return user dot username as the string representation. Then we'll also specify the items as a many to many field. And this is of the order item so that we can add these order items into the order. And then we can also add something like a start date. So the moment that the order was created and we can say this is a date time field and we'll pass in auto now add equal to true. And then we could say an ordered date equals models dot date time field. And I'm not going to pass anything in. So we'll manually set that value the moment that it is ordered. And then here in the order item, we can link that to this item model. So we'll say the item equals models dot foreign key with the item. And I'll also just specify on delete as cascade. Then here in the item model, this is where we're going to define the price. So this can just be a float field, just like this. And then if we pull open the terminal, we can try and run the server. Cool. So that's still working. We can then try and make these migrations. So let's run make migrations. And then we will say migrate. And we can also then go and add these into the admin. So just say from dot models import item order item and order and then call admin dot site dot register. And we'll just add these in. And so now we can go into the views and just create some basic views here. So we'll say define 
let's say the item list which just takes in a request and say return render of that request which we can just go to item list.html and we'll create some context which we'll need to get those models so we'll say from dot models import item just for now and then we can say this context has items which can just be item dot objects dot all and then we'll bring that into the core urls so we'll say urls dot pi there we'll say from django dot urls import path and then say our url patterns equals to a list and we'll just use an empty string and then just say from dot views import item list and then we can go into the dj e-commerce urls and we're already importing include so we'll create another path that just goes to an empty string and say include core dot urls and i'll also specify a namespace as core and then if we say run the server it says we need an app name so here in core urls just say app name equals core there we go then we can just go into the templates and i'll create item list.html we'll say that it extends from base.html and then we'll create a block content and inside here we can just say here is the list of items and say for item in items then n4 and i'll just i'll just say item like this and so now if we go to that base url we at least get that rendering out but we can also then go into the admin and we'll just create some items there we go and there we can see them coming through okay cool so everything is working so far and now what i'm going to do is go and grab a template which is the md bootstrap e-commerce template so you can go to mdbootstrap.com slash freebies slash jquery slash e-commerce and i'll also link this in the description and here you can download this for free which we're going to use in our project it has an mit license so we're going to make use of this and so that's just because one we don't want to spend time designing because that's not the point of django and two it'll look a lot nicer and everyone likes to work with something that looks nicer so you can go and download this for free i already have it so i'm going to bring it into this project now okay so there we can see the project and basically we want to take all of these static files bring them into our static in env folder and then everything else we can bring into the templates and i'm pretty much going to delete everything else that's not an html page so let's just grab all of those folders bring them into static so there they are and then the checkout home page product page i'm just going to bring into the templates and then we can get rid of that and so if we take a look at the home page this is basically what our base.html needs to make use of so what i'm going to do is just go to the view here and change this to homepage.html and then if we go back here and refresh this we're not going to get any styling sure so let's go back and what i'm going to do is just add in the static reference here so just start by saying load static and then in these hrefs and in all of these scripts here as well and then all the images we're going to add that static command so for example static like this okay let's try this again and this is what it looks like cool and what's nice about this as well is that we get a little bit of guidance as to what we need to make work and if you've watched the tutorial series on how to build any blog with django then this is the same kind of concept once you've been given a template you just figure out what needs to be rendered and what kind of data needs to come through 
So immediately just looking at some of these items, you've got a category, sportwear, you've got a title, gray blouse, you've got a kind of tag here, so best seller, and you've got the price, and that blue as well, if we inspect that, you can see it says primary color, that's why it's blue. So we could define also a label color, and that way then you can specify that in the model, so that when you create the item, then you could output whether it's the primary color or it's the secondary color, etc. So that's some of the fields that we could then define on this model, the item model. And we also see some pagination here. And if we scroll up, you've got some kind of filters that you could filter by category, a search bar, and you've got a cart item count. So what I'm going to do to end off this video, so to end off this video, what I'm going to do is in these files, the checkout page and the product page, I'm going to make them extend from a base.html. And the base.html is basically going to be kind of what we have right now. It's just going to be the blocks and it's just going to make use of all the scripts and the links that we have here in this head. And so I'll show what this looks like when that's done. Okay, so now I've finished the templates and this is what it looks like as per usual. We can go to the checkout page and this is what it looks like when you check out. And this is what it looks like on kind of like a product detail page. I would assume. So now that we at least have something that we can work with in the next one, we can start with the logic of adding to the cart and removing items from the cart and that whole checkout process. So if you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a comment down below and let us know what you thought. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.